huh? That's only if my memory is correct, though. In a turn, I should perhaps call Lucky someone who knew her circumstances was close at hand. That night, I promptly looked into the intel from earlier. But in the past, Sylvie used the Ista family name when she introduced herself. Wouldn't that have to mean... The loathing on Mina-chan's face was blatant. Hmm. So it really was serious. Mina-chan shook her head. できれば、あなたがじきじき見お姉様から聞いてほしかったですわね。私じゃ口にしにくいのですから。Sorry. She called Sylvie on her cell phone. もしもし、もしもし、お姉様。あのですね、今この下郎が厄介なことに気づきまして。はい、あの件です。それでですね。あの。はい。はい。だから言ってもいいわよ。オールはもう他人じゃないわ。してもオールの名字まで覚えてるなんて位置にはかなわないってオールに言っておいて。そう。私はお風呂に入らなくちゃ。ねえ、
我が王家シスワ家と長年最小の立場を牛耳るイスタ家の関係我がシスワ家は楽団派と呼ばれ国の安定のための調和を担います To this end, members of the Siswa family are highly knowledgeable of piano, ballet, and musical related matters in general. So, the Kuni no a n t e n i n o s t a k e Dokuni Yu, Kishin h a d e s w l and those black suited guards mentioned it, hadn't they? That they were part of the Imperial Knight faction. Gan Nai, Kuni wa kono Ryo ha. Even if two forces should hypothetically join hands, it's human nature to have no idea what's going on in their innermost thoughts. いつ頃からギスギスし始めたかは不明ですがおばあさまの代にはすでにギスってたそうですわ原因がどちらにあるかも今となっては不明ですわね王権をシスア家にばかり継承するシスア家にあるのか最小として王権に立てつくイスタ家にあるのか<笑>言ってて恥ずかしくなってきましたわいやべきじゃなかったかしら The same thing happened between Ieyasu san of the Tokugawas and Yoshimuna san here in Japan, so I think the same thing happens everywhere. So they decided to reconcile? シスワ家の即女、第二王女がイスタ家に養女に出されましたの。さまざまな要因と高度な政治的駆け引きあってのことですけど、これは紛れもなく友好の合図。イスタ家も脱げに蹴るほどバカではありません。第二王女が架け橋となり、シスワ家とイスタ家は、急速に緊張を緩和させていきましたわしかしこれだけではあくまで緊張の緩和友好の足がかりには両者が平等でなければなりませんイスタ家の即女をシスワ家に預けるこれで対等ですわ。この時期にこれで対等ですわ。That's what Sylvia is. この状況日本人のあなたなら何と例えますこと If I weren't picky with my words, maybe a hostage? しっくりくる表現ですわね。Sylvia is a hostage? しっくりはくるものの、正しいとは言いかねます。私はシルビーお姉様を姉として愛していますわ。そしてお姉さまも私や私の兄弟姉妹つまりシスワ家の人間を家族として愛しているはず幸せなはずですわ私もお姉さまになって I feel the same she looks like she's having fun ですわよねミナちゃん was probably feeling a little insecure but she seemed pleased by my response This obviously came as a surprise, but I did ultimately think it was pretty pointless for me to have learned. I'd dare say this only added another secret I couldn't publicly reveal. I clearly couldn't tell this to anyone else. The Sylvie that was ordinarily all smiles was actually a hostage. I did think it was outrageous. I really did, but. Sylvie didn't emit even the slightest aura of unhappiness. You could likely safely perceive this as her not feeling uncomfortable with the hostage lifestyle, just as Minachan suggested. 
As we heard in the call earlier, she seemed to have taken it extremely lightheartedly. It should be safe to assume she was happy right now. Which is why the thing that bothered me more in this whole situation wasn't so much Sylvie as... As long as we're on touchy subjects, I do have another question to ask. The Ista and Sisua families are on bad terms. Minachan, do you feel ashamed when you're at that villa? I was, of course, referring to the Sortilege villa we had visited before, and that being under the Ista family's jurisdiction. L, a female knight, had a room in the main building, and Minachan had a room in the guest hall. That had always bugged me. I could tell from the black suit's behavior that they overwhelmingly supported Sylvie, but they were somewhat distant toward Minachan. They were treating her like a guest, though. I see. There at least didn't appear to be any problems on Minachan's end. That eliminated two concerns of mine. Only three things concerned me in this matter. Sorry to the black suited knights who felt shamed, but they didn't matter. I couldn't be great enough of a person to worry about people I hardly knew. As long as the people I knew were happy, that was enough for me. Sylvie, Minachan, and... I wonder how Elle feels about it. どちらでもよかったはず。選ばれた基準は音感とか楽譜が読めるかとかそんなほんのちょっとしたものです。格段派に属するのですから、音楽の才能の良し悪し。エロいなよりシルビーお姉様の方がほんの少しだけ音楽
I understood the reasons that had been so ambiguous to me until now for El's loyalty. Huh. Oh, yeah, kind of. I just feel kind of broken hearted. Of course, it was disappointing, but I doubt that there was any room for me between El and Sylvie to say nothing of between the Knight El and the royal family. If El's engagement was for the benefit of the royal family, I would have no choice but to give up. Huh? Because of El's engagement. Huh? Hi. Oh, our stories weren't lining up. Ah, maybe that was it. Nothing Minachan had just told me had anything to do with El's engagement. Wait a second. Really? But she said her marriage prospects were already settled or something like that. She replied point blank. Huh? Huh? But Elle said before that she was engaged. Had she? she said in that impressively roundabout way. But she hadn't said she was engaged. Huh? What? に。え、聞きたいと言うから。さすが一ね。当時の私のこと名字まで覚えてたなんて。シルビー様、その件は部外費です。公然とはいえ、民間人に明かすことは許されません。え、そうだったかしら。Yes. El turned up out of nowhere and interrogated me. Minachan had just left. I, I wasn't expecting her to drop a bombshell like that on me either. Sylvie used a different name a long time ago. Anyone who heard that would definitely be curious why. It was all natural to want to ask, and I never thought the royal family secret would come out of it so readily. <sighs> シスアケ、イスタケにとっては非常にデリケートなことです。公害はせぬようお願いします。オッケー。もうあなたは本当にシルビー様にとって絶え間なく騒動を持ち込む種ですね。ハハ、I <笑> guess I can't deny that. The cause lay with the bombshells all around me rather than me personally to be accurate. But everything kind of fits now. Like the reason you treasure Sylvie so much, for instance. Sylvie was her blood-related little sister, after all. Their positions may have been altered, but that was an inseparable bond. Really? I see. True, my description just now was rude to El, to one who served as a knight every single day. But... But you know El? Hi. Allegiance and self-sacrifice are different. This conversation had cleared away every question I had about El. Why she had pledged so much loyalty to Sylvie. 
why she had stubbornly rejected fencing, which she wanted to continue badly enough it would put her into a slump, and why her quote-unquote engagement was predetermined even though she didn't actually have a fiancé. Don't you have your own life? I know you're devoted, but why quit fencing over it? Why try to pick your marriage partner solely for the sake of friendship between the Sisuas and Istas? <laughs> Elle faced away as I poked holes into her logic. I should have known I really had gotten the wrong idea about her. If I actually thought it through, there was no way Elle had a fiancé. If someone as straight-laced as Elle was engaged, she never would have, have been pretend lovers with another man like myself. Wasn't this past month I'd spent proof she wasn't engaged? Well, yeah, there is. I love you, Elle, so I don't want to give up on you for some imaginary fiancé. Well, even writing this off as my own whim. Sylvie is bothered by it too. She can't believe you are throwing fencing away for her sake, especially when you love it as much as you do. What you're doing isn't allegiance, it's dependence. Elle was shaken. She clearly didn't want it pointed out, but she likely had a vague idea of that fact herself. I felt bad phrasing it as dependence, but had zero intention of fully denying it either. Everyone gets involved in some organization or another at some point in their life, and it's extremely rare to not become dependent on it. Be it a knight, a warrior, or what have you made for the perfect example, it was their honor to be dependent and serve their country or royal family. But Sylvie didn't want that at all. And if so, that needed to be conveyed to her in no uncertain terms. Sylvie doesn't want you to be dependent on her, she wants you to lead your own life. Would it hurt anything if you didn't quit fencing? You are free to live for Sylvie's sake, but if you love fencing, let's search for some path where the two can at least coexist. That's what Sylvie wants. Sylvie wanted Elle to continue fencing, so that much was true. That's what she said. Ah, wait, wait. I assume you just thought you'd continue when you heard Sylvie wants you to. You can't keep doing that. That is dependence. If you find fencing fun and want to continue, then do it. If you don't, then quit. What we want is for you to make that choice on your own. I get that. This seems kind of complicated to me too. I wasn't very smart and I found it difficult to verbalize those feelings. But yeah. But if I repeated something she'd said... You know, doesn't your life belong to you? You're alive. Doesn't this time belong to you and you alone? I believe everyone is free to lead their life however they choose, whether that means a lifestyle of dashing full throttle out of a desire to be golden, or a leisurely lifestyle that's subdued and unassuming. But the one who makes that choice should be you personally. I. I once made a decision that cost me my teammates, my friends, everyone. But I don't regret it. My choice was to pretend to be cool. I don't know whether I succeeded, but even now I don't regret that decision. Come to think of it, Elle was the only one who knew about my past. She gave a tiny nod. That's how I want it to be for you too, Elle. The one thing I want is for you to make a decision. I have no clue whether it'll lead to a future that's shining gold or subdued and unassuming, but... but... Huh? Mm? Hmm? 
Elle leaned her face in close for a surprise attack. I was so startled, I couldn't respond to the gesture in time. Elle had swooped in and pressed her lips against mine as if it were the most natural thing in the world. Mm. Our first kiss in a week. This time around, her kiss felt so much softer compared with the last time when I had initiated it. Ooh ha! Huh? Huh? What? Was that the sort of conversation that led into a kiss just now? Elle giggled and... <laughs> right. Yeah, I think that's how it's meant to be. But that's how it's meant to be. Right. Another? Was that? <laughs> she kissed me again. She, she kissed me like it were only natural, and my heart ached at the incredibly soft sensation of her lips. <laughs> Elle smiled happily. おっしゃる通り、シルビーが失策に行くことになった時から、私は将来はシルビーと姉妹に戻る。小さい頃のことなのでそんな考えもあったのかも。今になっても婚約するならば両家の架け橋となる。イスタケの息女として。<笑> That line of thinking suited someone like Elle, who was both a knight and the daughter of a high-class family. Yeah. I was blindsided by her direct profession of love, and it left me feeling flustered. Actually, as far as that goes, I honestly figured you would take things more slowly. I figured she'd get on board with the idea eventually, but I was more so focused on getting this fencing thing situated, then pursue her in earnest afterward. But eh? Uh, she was as candid as ever. そちらこそどうなのですか？何だか困っているようですが。あ、もしかしてもう心変わりしてしまったとか。I would never. I will love you forever and ever. I had fully intended on pursuing her romantically in the future and was surprised she'd agreed to it so soon. <laughs> I caught her as she fell into my arms. Oh, wow. However, I couldn't bear the sudden weight and lost my balance, thus falling backward on the bed. Now that we were safely on the bed, I pulled her into a tight embrace. Then we don't need to worry about you being in a slump anymore? <laughs> really? Glad to hear it. That was a relief. I was relieved to hear she loved me, but the competition was far more important right now. She'd worked so hard recently, and I wanted her to do well during her match. <laughs> huh? 
私がスランプ集中力を書いたのは試合が終わればもうフェンシングができないからとかではありませんまあそれもあったかもしれませんがそれよりエルリンドエンクロース She kissed me again. I should come my car, I could not shock up. Zut, really? So, this whole thing really was my fault then? I was glad she got back on her feet at least. Joe, you have a more tabemastaka? Not yet, actually. Nada, you is the e de shocker. Oh, but today is supposed to be. Elle said she wouldn't be making me dinner going forward, but. Elle grinned shyly. I was so happy. She gathered together the various ingredients needed to prepare the same dish we had shared on our first day as pretend lovers, cream stew. It had been rather chilly out lately, and I was incredibly grateful for it. Doudeska? Delicious. Yokata. <laughs> we quietly ate together. There were no gleeful cheers of delicious, so yummy. We were sharing one of El's home cooked meals, and it tasted incredible. These dinners felt like part of our new normal, so there was no reason to get antsy anymore. Thank you for dinner. We calmly placed our hands together. Even though we just started dating, we were already starting to act like a middle aged couple. Well, with that, nothing was especially out of the ordinary. But we were no longer pretend lovers. Next would come. El promptly going home was part of our usual routine. Going home. Ah, um, listen. Hi. I suddenly stopped her. Frankly, it would suck to just send her home now that we were no longer pretending to be lovers. I really wanted to kiss her again. Let's see. Um, so. Uh. I want to kiss you. Oh man, I couldn't tell her that. Not only would it be embarrassing, but we'd just finished eating dinner and I was worried I had bad breath. Oro? I yeah, listen. It would be a shame for her to go home so early over a lame reason like that. I wanted to spend a little more time with Elle and to help make that happen. How about after a sh shower, like we usually do? Huh? You haven't had your post practice shower yet, right? Or did you take one when you went home earlier? Yeah. Elle did two things whenever she came here make dinner and shower. Not only was it not unnatural, it would give me a decent amount of time. Nice going, me! El head to the bathroom. Okay then. Mo! I broke out a brand new toothbrush and cleaned my mouth like my life depended on it. I brushed enthusiastically enough that it might sand my teeth down, then swished around some mouthwash. Ha! Was the mint smell too strong? Even if my mouth were clean, she'd probably think I was getting ahead of myself. I rinsed out my mouth with water. Swish, swish. All right. Nothing. Don't worry about it. El came back out surprisingly quickly. Sure. Huh? I didn't really understand what she was getting at. Then El um Hi Ah, not good. 
It was great, I had brushed my teeth and all, but the time in between made it difficult for me to suggest that we should kiss. What should I do? I had just gotten Dorkay earlier, so I didn't want her to think I was being predatory. さ、さわと言われて、従った私も私ですが、オーロ、ガツガツしすぎです。そんな、さっきの今でいきなりなんて。そういうことは結婚してから。でも、日本の常識では違うのでしょうか。ああ、どうしよう。What should I do? We had both gone stiff. Um Oh, I know. Uh, why don't I dry your hair? Then, this was part of our usual routine. I fetched the hair dryer and the towel. I had her sit on the bed with me behind her. I slowly combed through her hair with a gentle heat and air pressure. Sure haven't. Once we got back into our usual rhythm, the mood naturally lightened. We haven't done this for the past week after all. Now that you mention it, isn't your hair a little messy? There was some slight roughness as I passed my fingers through. I bet you did a sloppy job drying it this past week. We went to all that effort too. Try to take care of it, okay? <laughs> Only for you, I have zero interest in figuring out the quality of anyone else's hair. <laughs> I continue to smoothly tease her hair. <laughs> when my fingers touched her scalp, Elle stirred a bit ticklishly. Whenever I did this until just a short time ago, it had felt like I had done something wrong, hadn't it? But now it was fun. Touch, touch. Oh, just felt like it. I gave her head a pet. I wouldn't put it that way. Since I am tickling you, yeah. Elle protested with a sidelong glance. A perfect distance. I kissed her. I get it now. I didn't have to go out of my way to say I wanted to. Rather, I could just lean in close when the mood was right. If the mood fit, I could kiss her any time. Oop! It was more effective than I had imagined, and Elle flopped feebly over backwards in place. Which was fine, since we were on the bed, but... Elle? Oh, I'll probably have to make a cut soon. Elle had laid down in bed. This left me poised, effectively leaning over her. If I were to continue to kiss her, our bodies would obviously press together. I didn't even have to touch Elle's skin with my palms to know just how soft she truly was. Elle. She was saying something in a shrill tone, but our kiss muffled her words. We exchanged a long, deep kiss. We both gradually relaxed as our bodies pressed together. Despite how cold I had been and Elle just getting out of the shower, our body temperatures rose and our skin was glazed with a thin layer of sweat. (laughs) 
However, we were still hesitant to do anything more than kissing. Would it be okay to up and do it now? I wasn't some playboy, so I had no clue how to proceed in times like these. I vented all of my emotions into my kisses to make up for it. Our lips rubbed together and our bodies clashed, and then... Ha! Ha ha! We had forgotten to breathe and we ended up gasping for air. Ha! Ha! Both of our faces were as red as could be. Kisses, sure were erotic, weren't they? They were enough to put you into a strange mood. That obviously went for me and also for Elle. Oh yeah, weren't you in the middle of saying something earlier? Something about this being an engagement? She quietly shook her head. Hmm? Uh, right. It didn't make much sense to me, but it appeared Elle had already made up her mind. I, I wouldn't do that, seriously. She just gave her consent, so... She might not have understood the full implications behind the term sexual assault in this language. She went limp. Okay then, uh huh. If she told me to continue, I would do just that. I put my lips back on hers again and then. Amph. Without pulling away, my lips moved toward her cheek. And then I slowly trailed down from her ears to the nape of her neck. Does it tickle? This... <laughs> Elle trembled from the onslaught of butterfly kisses and her face was as red as could be. Were those long eyelashes of hers wet with sweat or with tears? Whichever the case, she didn't resist. Amph. <laughs> I gave her nape, right by her carotid artery, a quick nibble. She sprung her spine backward and bashed into me as I hung over her. The upward pressure from her breasts was outstanding and it made my heart race. <laughs> Elle's entire body had gone stiff from sheer nervousness. I wish she would relax a little more. When that occurred to me... Touch! I touched both of her shoulders. Rub rub, I rubbed them down to ease her tension. Uh, oh, nah, that's not what this is. Never mind. Guess my intentions hadn't gotten through to her. I felt kind of embarrassed, so... Squeeze! I went ahead and stuck the palms of my hands over her chest. Squish! Wow. Oh, uh, sorry. But this was the first time I'd touched Elle's chest. I believed Uwa was just the foremost thought in my mind. It was just so incredible. Heavy. Even though I was grabbing them from above, I could sense their weight in my hands. So, so this was how it felt to touch boobs this huge in real life? They were soft enough that my fingers would likely sink in with a bit of force, yet spring enough that they would recoil back outward. Touching was enough to give me shivers. I frantically suppressed the urge to grab hold and rub them for all I was worth. When I gently massaged them, I could tell Elle's lingering tension was slowly fading away. 
she had stopped putting up a front and gradually began to lean into my caress. Ha! It's because I'm turned on. Ah, she tensed up. Was she this easily spooked? Shouldn't that be obvious? Heck, given the situation, it'd be rude to you if I weren't. Are you scared? Hmm. I had thought this for some time now. Elle did have an extremely fastidious side to her. It didn't bother her even if she sweat profusely during exercise, so she was fine with it physically. But she valued mental cleanliness immensely, both for herself and Sylvie. Perhaps I should call it chastity. Well, I did think that was a wonderful thing. Given where we are at, I hope you'll keep an open mind on the subject. I could tell you're turned on too. Hmm, maybe you would call it like letting your passions guide you like this. Hey ya! I buried my face in her gigantic boobs. Both my face and head were submerged into the depths of her soft titties. Whoa! Now it was time to shake, shake, shake my face. Fuha! <laughs> like this. When I turned my reasonable side off for a second, I did something pretty darn moronic. It was out of my control, else honking knockers called to me. Yeah, that was a bad example just now. You can just do whatever it is you want to do right now. No, well, this is just the way it has to be then. I wanted to help her be just as excited as I was. Knowing Elle's personality, it would be tough for her to flip that mental switch. I doubt that she'd ever done anything remotely sexual in her entire life. No two ways about it, that fastidiousness was just who Elle was. I'll help you get aroused one way or another. <laughs> I went back in for another kiss and fondled her chest. I squished, squashed and rolled her prominent, upwardly protruding chest in an entirely different way than earlier within my grasp. <laughs> Elle, try opening your mouth. <laughs> Just because, okay? Her pink lips timidly opened. Then I slipped my tongue sleekly inside. I forcibly initiated a French kiss, but Elle wasn't particularly opposed. She sucked on my submerged tongue and occasionally gave me a gentle lick back. My tongue was being licked by another person. I wasn't sure if I should describe it as ticklish or otherwise, but it was a sensation I had never experienced before. To say nothing of the fact it was with Elle, this was plenty to make me look forward to more and practically made my mind boil, but there were more important matters right now. Okay then, I'll make a cut here and uh, I'll see you in the next episode of King Koi Golden Labariche. Bye-bye.